Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Loved, protected, and safe, I hope. Today's words of encouragement from God are about salvation, coming home to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He has been bringing two songs back to me regarding this. First is, no more running in circles, trying to be good enough. I'm far from perfect, but I found perfect love in the arms that won't let go. Got a heart on fire, got a wind at my back, singing hallelujah, I'm free at last. Every day I'm running home. He called my name, and he stole my shame. Everything changed when I came running home. Out of the dark, into his arms. No more running away, I'm running home. The second is, I never thought I'd see the day when every single chain would break, or hear the voice of heaven call my name. Then Christ came, changing everything. He took my sin and shame away. Now every song I sing will be for him, ever since the moment he walked in. Then Christ came. I was a non-believer until things had gotten so bad in my life that I could either give up forever or call out to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I chose the latter. There is no right or wrong way to call out to them, but if you need a starting point, this is what I cried out. God, I give up. I give everything of myself to you. I can't do this on my own. I need your help. Please help me help my children. If you're real, just protect my kids. I'm not asking for myself. Just please help me help them. I give you my life, Lord. Now I want you to keep this in mind. It took another five years to realize they not only heard me, but had been working in our lives the entire time. At the very moment I cried out to them, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, gave me salvation from my sins, and God pulled me from Satan's pit of destruction for my life and my son's life as well. Slowly things I did were changing. Things I watched, listened to, my words and actions changed to be more Christ-like. I took no pleasure in the sinful ways of my past, but had been renewed in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's ways of truthful living. I still had and have struggles in my life, but the difference is now I have peace and calm in every situation, knowing that my steps are ordered by God, they are forever protected by God and Jesus Christ. Everything I truly need, I am always provided with, and God always makes a way, even when I can't see it. I rely solely on them for everything, and I'm never disappointed with anything, as everything that happens is supposed to happen for their good and glory. We are meant to go through storms in our lives to strengthen us in their commands, laws, ways, words, and truth, as well as this is where our faith and trust are built in them, in, waiting, in the waiting for them to pull us through. In your walk with them is where their favor on your life is granted to you. This is accomplished when you are living in their will for your life and not living in your own. The more you do for them, the more they do for you. So when all hope feels lost, that is when you need to cry out to them, giving your life and everything in it to them. Do this and all things will be granted to you in their perfect timing. Remember, it's a slow step-by-step -step process and you need every step to defeat Satan's plans of destruction for your eternal life. So never give up, never give in. Sorrow may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now here are a few scriptures to help guide you through. The first is Matthew 6.33. But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all things will be given to you also. Romans 10, 8-13 But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word, the message, the basis of faith which we preach, because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes in Christ as Savior, resulting in his justification, that is, being made righteous, being freed from the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. And with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes in him, whoever adheres to, trusts in and relies on him, will not be disappointed in his expectations. For there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile, for the same Lord is Lord over all of us, and he is abounding in riches, blessings, for all who call on him in faith and prayer. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord in prayer will be saved. Ephesians 2, 1-10 through 10. And you he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins in which you once walked. You were following the ways of this world, influenced by the present age, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving who fight against the purposes of God. Among these unbelievers we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were, by nature, children under the sentence of God's wrath, just like the rest of mankind. 
But God, being so very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love with which he loved us, even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive together with Christ. For by his grace, his undeserved favor and mercy, you have been saved from God's judgment. And he raised us up together with him when we believed and seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. And he did this so that in the ages to come he might clearly show the immeasurable and unsurpassed riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus by providing for our redemption. For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but is the undeserved gracious gift of God, not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works with which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. John 3:16 and 17. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge and condemn the world, that is, to initiate the final judgment of the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Acts 4.12 And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among people by which we must be saved, for God has provided the world no alternative for salvation. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God, that is, his remarkable, overwhelming gift of grace to believers, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith, in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come, because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Isaiah 12.2 Behold, God, my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song. Yes, he has become my salvation. Isaiah 54.17 No weapon that is formed against you will succeed, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn. This peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, says the Lord. Psalms 91.11 For he will command his angels in regard to you, to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. Matthew 25.41 Then he will say to those on his left, Leave me, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels, demons. Jeremiah 26.13 Therefore, now change your ways and your deeds, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent and reverse his decision concerning the misfortune which he has pronounced against you. God had brought me low before him to bring me back to him, and after suffering for a while, he brought me high, and it only keeps going higher. My son and I were evicted from my deceased brother's house in December of last year. We had no one or anywhere to go to for help. God not only provided for us during these times of distress, but built us stronger in him and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. We not only survived, but started to thrive during our suffering, trials, and tribulations. Then God's favor really started coming forth in our lives when we proved to him that we will never give up or end to Satan and his workers in this world. He gifted me with a car I had no money or credit for, then a laptop to do his work of which I had no money or credit for, then told me to apply for a position in which he granted me with, then a promotion just two weeks later into management. These are things not able to be done on my own hand, but only at the righteous right hand of God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. So remember, never give up, never give in, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, and victory upon victory will be yours through them alone by living in their will for your eternal life in their kingdom. Remember, God, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit, the angels and I love you all without question or reservation. May God's love, peace, grace, blessings, joy, mercy, understanding, compassion, caring, kindness, patience, wisdom, Protection, guidance, glory, goodness, corrections, truth and trust, favor and anointing, faithfulness and steadfastness, forgiveness and salvation, strength, endurance, clarity, courage, calm in every situation, and everything good of them always be with you, guiding you through. Have a blessed day in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I love you all, and I'll see you later.